All right, good morning or good day, wherever you are, whatever time of day it is. So what I was gonna do today is basically um, give you, the home brewer, uh, some ideas on what you can do with the Cooper's beer kits uh, and how to experiment with them and some of the statistics that Cooper's provides. Uh, so like if you wanna use the original series beer kits as a baseline to um, you know, uh, make your own style uh, or a style replicate something off the BJCP guidelines, you know, which is a Brew Judge certification program guidelines. So uh, Cooper's on their website does provide um, bitterness and color. And I, you might have a hard time reading this and I can, I'll, I'll flash up uh, um, a photograph of these and I, and I can maybe make on a website available these stats so they're all in one place but these these uh, numbers are, are slightly confusing because they seem really high you know I mean I don't know how much uh, you uh, people out there are aware of you know color in in um, in bitterness calculations you know the uh, bitterness is IBUs international bitterness units and a typical, like, you know, American style beer would have actually, like, uh, you know, maybe 20 international, that's, that would be like a Budweiser uh, or 25. Uh, whereas, like, here, the Cooper's Lager is listed at 30, 390. And the reason why this big, large discrepancy is because these are calculated in the concentrated form with all the water removed. So you need to, in order, when you're designing your recipe, which this is the best way to do it because that's actually what it is. Coopers themselves do not know what you're going to actually do with the final brew. How much water you're gonna add, you know, whatever else you're gonna to add to it. So, um, and this is the color and that's an EBC. Um, I don't, uh, again, these are really high like a, a Cooper's Lager at 90, that would almost be, um, you know, a, a, an amber ale. Uh, or no, even darker, it'd probably be like a stout. So I don't have the, uh, the Lava Bond, I mean, uh, EBC calculations handy. But so what I'll do is, like I said, I'll put up a, uh, a slide of this so you can see these better. These are all the Cooper's beer kits listed. And then here I have in this column color, and this column bitterness. And these numbers, like I said, are very high. So what I was gonna do though, in this short little video, um, is to show you how to convert that based on you know, what you wanna do with your beer. Like, uh, let's use as an example, um, you know, the, the, the lowest uh, color and bitterness beer. It's the Mexican Cerveza, I don't know. Summertime, you might want to whip up a cerveza, okay? Um, so, Cooper's has listed here the color at 53 and the bitterness at 270. That bitterness seems really high. You're not going to drink a Mexican cerveza at 270. However, when you add 23 liters of water, you're talking about a different story. So, the way to calculate it is to multiply the quoted bitterness, which Cooper's has at 270, okay? So, we're going to take that 270, okay? And by the weight of the product. Now, the Cooper's Mexican Cerveza beer kit is actually uh, uh, 1.7 kg. So, you would multiply that times 1.7 kg, okay, and, uh, and divide the total by the number of brew uh, volume that you are going to make. Now, Cooper's recommends 23 liters, okay? So, um, so, you know, let's say you want to make a fuller volume, you know, fuller beer. 20, you could do it 20 liters, okay? But your bitterness will be higher based on that. So, Normally, the 23 liters, okay, would be um, the calculation here, okay? So you got 270 in terms of the quoted bitterness times 1.7 kg, which is your weight, times the, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, I made a mistake. 
you divide this total by the volume that you're producing. I'm very sorry about that. So, okay, 23 liters. That would be a crazy number there. So, sorry about the confusion. Okay, and the reason why they use the weight and quoted is because um, they, they use these because it's based on a 10% weight volume dilution. Okay? Um, I'm not a chemist. <laughs> so let's, anyway, let's get into the calculation a little bit. All right. Uh, so the product bitterness uh, times 1.7 divided by 23 equals, if I have a calculator, I could, could demonstrate it really quickly, but I have it written down here, equals 20 IBUs, okay? which seems about right for a Mexican cerveza. Very low bitterness, not a lot of bite. And it, this particular beer kit itself actually has probably no aroma hops in it either. It's just a nice little refreshing summer beer. Uh, you're not going to want to have a too bitter beer on a hot day, right? So, um, however, this, this bitterness actually represents before fermentation. Fermentation as a way of scrubbing, attacking things, not attacking, but it eats and consumes things. So you can have a reduction of both the color and the uh, bitterness by about 10 to 30 percent. So there could be a final range, depending on how vigorous this, uh, you know, fermentation is, of about after the reduction of, of, of 10 to 30 percent, a final range of about 14 to 18 IBUs, okay, for bitterness. Again, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of low, okay? And that's what you want for the Mexican cerveza. So when you, that's how you go through the calculation and it goes through both for the color and the bitterness, as I said. So the kits that you probably want to experiment with the most when you're trying to design your own are the lager, Draft, real ale, dark ale, and stout. Uh, some of the other styles, although the traditional draft is a really fun beer to, to work with, and the IPA and the wheat. Okay, Pilsner, just add some finishing hops. But these guys, if you're really trying to experiment, is probably the best because they don't really have any finishing hops affecting the final flavor. So you can use dry hopping. So I think, you know, when you're work designing, you want to have a more complex beer of your own making, I would recommend these guys. And uh, so like the lager, you know, as a baseline with the bitterness and the draft, uh, you know, and the real ale are probably the three key ones to, to work with. Um, you know, these are, they're easy kits. Um, you know, you don't have a lot of time in the summer. The weather is too hot to bring out a brew kettle. You just want to whip up a beer by adding some small specialty grains, uh, some um, you know dry hopping so for some final flavor. I tell you, these are great. I've done it time and time again. Um, you know, you don't have the craftiness of spending eight hours doing it, but at the same time, you can produce a high quality beer. So, I just wanted to kind of give you a little background on this right now. And I hope it's been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, email me or you know send me a comment or whatever. Uh, again, I'll try and get this this spreadsheet um, available somewhere, and maybe I'll get a slide so it can be presented better on this video because I know um, this is probably hard to read. Uh, well, you know, we'll see. So that's all I have for now, and uh, I hope to get another video up shortly. Cheers.